Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and in this video, let's talk about time. The most mismanaged thing by a variety of people, in fact a lot of people. In this video, we're going to explore a little bit about the documentation about the time in Golang and we'll see what all formats are available and what we can do and dig up in the research while studying the documentation. So first let's create all these folders and files so that we can have some of the assets up here. So I'm going to call this one as my time and just like always, we have already seen this one main.go let's open this up into integrated terminal and just like always let's create a mod file good practice so go mod in it and call this one as my time that's it that's all what we're going to do let's hit back onto this guy and let's talk about the time so time is an official dedicated package given to us by uh, go but there are a couple of others as well in case you want to manipulate a little bit more on that and there are some specially based on web as well. So we're not gonna go into that. We are gonna go into the core time package given to us. It's not too much big, but there are some special syntax that you have to follow in around. So let's go and take out, take a look at the function. So we can see there is after, sleep, and tick. We will be using this sleep a little bit later on because this is really a, one of the most tricky one. Let's go ahead and use uh, some of the constants, not constant actually, inside the index. So we can see there is a lot going on in this here. You can go ahead and use the time location. There is a time and a whole bunch of other things. You can go for date, day, append, time. So there is no shortage of going on this one. The one is the nanosecond, month and all of that. Uh, there's one more thing I would like to show you here if I can find that easily or I need to just search for it. Uh, the one thing that you'll be using quite a lot is actually the time format. And this is, this is the one up here. So I'm gonna just directly hit there and there we go. Sometimes it's easier to use Command F or Control F. Now time also provides you syntax for formatting the stuff. And this is the most important and the crucial stuff here. We can go ahead and even look at the example. So have a look at this example. And you're gonna see that this is very, very crucial and you have to provide a lot of values in order for that. And that is why reading the documentation of the time itself is like really, really problemsome. And a lot of people uh, end up just lost into this time package. So that's why I wanted to bring you that it's not always easy. It sometimes can be tricky one. So let me show you that how to do it easy way. Okay, so we're gonna close this one and let's go ahead and do that. So let's open up our code file and try to figure out that how we can actually understand this time package a little bit easier. It's not that tricky, trust me, it's easier. Okay, let's go ahead and have a simple main. And let's, just like always, uh, we're gonna say, welcome to time study. That's a nice name. Time study of Golang. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, now coming up onto the part that how we actually go ahead and study the time. Let's go ahead and say that I want to have first a present time, what is the time right now? And obviously the package that's going to help us is the time. And it has a feature or a method that we can use. And definitely you can go for the dot add, add date after that, and it is going to add not just numerically, but date wise all these values. Right now we're not worried on that. I just want to see what you give me when I say time dot now. So obviously this is not being used. So let's go ahead and do fumped dot print and just go ahead and present this time. Let's see what output we get. Is it helpful for us? Is it useful for us? Or we need to do something more on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say go run main.go and uh, it's going to take a little bit while but then it gives me something interesting. It says 2021, which is this year, and the 8th and the 18th, it is August and the 18th. And then it gives me 230759. Yeah, it's pretty late at night, but this is what it is. And then it gives me plus 530 IST, Indian Standard Time, and some of the margins and a whole bunch of other things. It is usable. Yeah, it is usable, but not in this format. I would love that if my format of the time is being changed a little bit uh, like that. So can we use a little bit of that? Yes, we can change the format of the time as well. And this is where everything gets so much interesting about the go. So we're gonna go ahead and say that I want to use this present time, but I want to use a dot format on that. Now, as soon as you use the dot format, you have to pass on a whole lot of parameter. The first one being that you have to say 01 dash 02 dash 2006. What is this date? Why we are using exactly this date? 
Now this is where Go gets a little bit crazy on that part. Let me just try to first run that and show you the output of that. And this time we see that we only receive the date. There's no change in the date itself. It is 08, it is 18, and it is 2021. How can I forget this year? So we see that this is all great. But why we are using this 01022006? Turns out in the documentation it is mentioned that we are always going to use this time as a standard for formatting. So no matter what your actual time is, no matter actual value is, you have to give the format something that, hey, this is the format that you have to use. I just want you to give me year, month, and all of that. So in case you want to have that, you have to use the syntax. There is no, uh, like, there is no exception for that. For example, if you want to have a little bit like, uh, you want to have days in it too. So you have to go ahead and run it like that. And then it's going to give you Wednesday. This is this Wednesday is actually today Wednesday, but you always have to give Monday here. This is like, yeah, this is painful, crazy to understand, but this is all it goes. In case you want to get the current uh, time, like taking time itself as well, then there is also a specific number that you have to use, which is 15.04.05. Uh, uh, yeah, this is how it goes. Like really, I don't like it, uh, too, not too much of a big fan, but this is it. Now this is my current date. Let me just go ahead and run this again. This is my current date. And this is exact time which is happening, 2310, 28 seconds. And today is Wednesday. Yeah, this is crazy. So you have to remember this, although this is given up inside the documentation as well. In case you forget, you can go ahead and uh, search for this one. And uh, seems like this is not it's not. It is in actually in the format. So I have to look up for format just like this. This is the format layout string that I want to go for this. And close the example. And there we go. And there is somewhere. I, I, take, I took it out from the documentation itself. I don't remember that kind of a stuff. So yeah, this actually came in the documentation from the documentation itself. So let me just try to open up the example. And probably it is somewhere here. And yeah, this is this is where it is. So basically, full date is uh, like this, and this is where you have to like read and go through like that. So you have to read this entire output as well as this entire thing to understand this. And notice here, this is two thousand and six and one, two, and then yeah. So it gets a little bit crazy. Told you, not a big fan, but this is the only way how you are gonna get it. If you want to avoid anything, like you want to just the date, uh, you can just go ahead and remove all of this. But this is the whole syntax. Okay, quite a lot. Now let's go ahead and move on to the reverse syntax of it. Maybe you don't want to get the current time, maybe you want to create the time from some of the values that you are manually entering. So we need to go other way around as well. Let's go ahead and say, uh, this is created date, something that you are creating. So in case you want to do that, you can go ahead and say time. And this time, instead of saying time dot now, uh, you can go ahead and say, I want to create a date. And this is how you do it. And then just provide the date. So maybe you want to create 2020. I don't know why would you like to do that, but let's just say you want to go back into 2020. And then you have to provide all of this month and then time dot month and uh, date and all of that. So remember, month is a type of time dot month. Rest of them, day is integer, hour is integer, minute is integer, second is integer, and nanosecond is integer. And rest I'm, I'm going to talk about in a second. But remember, this is the only tricky part that month is month uh, time dot month so when you're giving a month you have to go ahead and say time and then put up a dot and then you can choose any month uh, my favorite one happens to be august so i'm going to go ahead and choose august and then you have to provide uh, all these values so let's just say i want to go for 10 as a day and uh, then i'm going to go ahead and say hour probably 23 minute probably 23 and i'm going to go for zero for second and zero for nanosecond. And then comes up is the location. So how you're going to provide the location? There are lots of location, and that is location based on in what time zone you are. So you have to go ahead and provide that. And luckily for us, if I just go ahead and say time dot, it's gonna give me all that time dot locale, UTC, UTC, and a whole bunch of other things. I'm gonna just choose the basic one, which is time dot UTC, and now you can see it is all happy. Of course, I haven't used it, but apart from that, it is all happy. Let's go up here and move on to the next line. And there we go. Okay, so now that you have created a date, obviously you want to print the date. So let's go ahead and do font and let's go ahead and directly create a created date. 
shouldn't be a problem apart from one thing that it looks ugly. So we see that our date is this, so it looks ugly. Now, if we want to make sure that this date also looks a little bit pretty, again, the same format thing, you have to use it. So let's go ahead and say font, create a date. And of course, you can go ahead and say, I want to format it. And I want to format it again. You have to remember this 01 to 2006. I happen to still struggle to remember this, but I have actually written this as a note on my desk so that I can always see that. Uh, let's just say I want to see 01-02- come on, dash 02-2006. And I want to see what date it is. No matter what date, I want to see what date it is. So no matter what the current date is, you always have to pass on as a format as Monday. There we go. Now it should look a little bit more beautiful. Let's run this one. And yeah, this is 8, 10, uh, 2020 and uh, it is Monday. So this happened to be Monday. Let's go ahead and change this one so that we just verify that. Uh, let's go for 12. Let's go ahead and run this again. And this happened to be Wednesday. Quite incident, coincident there. Okay, so there we go. This is all basics about the time. But again, as I told you, time package is a whole lot of confusing. There are so much things available like tickers and sleepers and all of that. And we will definitely use this slipper uh, time.sleep uh, later on in one of the section, one of the video. But don't you worry too much. This is the majority of the stuff that you'll be using while writing APIs or any kind of application on that. But there is something interesting. Since you have learned about the time, maybe you want to create something like a ticking time or something like that. I will show you how to do something fun in the next video. Let's catch up there. Thank you.